Let's start with the 10 minute rule bill. Olivia Blake. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to make provision for and in connection with offences relating to verbal and physical abuse of public facing workers in the course of their employment. Abuse is a regular occurrence, unfortunately. I've been sworn at, spat at, pushed, had trolleys rammed into me, had grown men tell me they will rape and kill me. I have plenty of colleagues that have been assaulted. One had a man wait in the car park for him and smash a glass bottle over his head. That's one constituent's account of the abuse they face at work. But there is more. I've had threats to smash my face in and threats such as stabbing, threats to my family, punching, needles, threats to follow me home, waiting around until I finished work, arson and generally abusive shouting and swearing and spitting. These stories are a part of a wider pattern that goes beyond only one section of the economy or one type of workplace. Many people have looked in horror at the footage from Asda and Clapham, which showed the man but uh, brutally attacking workers and customers at that store. My own union, the GMB, is campaigning for stronger legal protections for workers because of these assaults. I have also heard from cabin crew workers who have suffered rising levels of abuse as they try to enforce social distancing protocols on planes, journalists facing increasing har harassment, abuse and even assault by far-right groups, NHS workers being accosted by anti-vaxxers and Covid deniers while they are going about treating the sick, librarians who are facing rising levels of abusive behaviour, workers in bars and restaurants facing violence and intimidation from customers, and transport workers, often working alone, who have been spat at, threatened and physically assaulted. Everywhere, rising levels of abuse directed at people who work with the public. Last June, a survey conducted by the Institute of Customer Services found that more than half of customer-facing employees have experienced increased hostility from customers during the coronavirus crisis. More than half of the participants in the survey from the RMT reported being threatened with physical violence. 88% had, had been verbally abused, 13% had reported being racially harassed and 16% being spat at or targeted with other bodily fluids. In a survey in 2010, Ustor reported very similar. COVID has made us, uh, this growing problem even worse, but it would be a mistake to think that this is the cause. Before the outbreak, the 2020 crime report found that 83% of people in convenience store sectors have been subject mm. to verbal abuse. It is estimated that there has been more than 50,000 incidents of violence. Some of the responsibility lies with individuals. We need to see a change in behaviour and a culture of how we treat front-facing workers. That change won't happen on its own, and part of our discussion should include what employers can do to protect workers. We need better reporting, support and a more robust pursuit of prosecutions. But we also see, need to see government take action. Today with this bill, I'm here to propose that a verbal or physical abuse of public-facing workers carrying out their duties has to be made its mm -hmm. own specific offence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are some who say we already have enough on the statute book on this, that there are already laws to take uh, together to cover the offences of abusing frontline staffs, but our laws reflect and shape our society. If the existing legislation reflects the situation in which we are spiralling, seeing spiralling levels of abuse, then it is time that we changed it, because the status quo simply isn't working. The British Retail Consortium reports that only 6% of incidents of violence uh, and abuse ended in prosecution, and only 3% of cases was the victim performing a public service as an aggravating factor. The lack of action has consequences. In a survey conducted by the RMT, 43% of respondents said they hadn't reported the incidents to their managers. When asked why, the most common reason was that they didn't feel it would be taken seriously or that it was just part of their job. A quarter said that they had reported incidents and no action had been taken. Ustor found similar, with a survey saying a quarter of their members had never reported abuse they suffered and that it was a regular occurrence. The most recent polling of the Institute of Customer Serving reports nearly half of workers who participated in the survey do not report incidents of abuse. Over half of those who had been abused didn't think it would make the difference. 
And why would you when the rate of prosecution is so low? No wonder the system isn't working. The sentencing for common assault is complicated. There are three ca categories of harm and culpability, 19 aggravating factors and 11 mitigating factors. A new law would make the process far simpler. We've already seen how it could look in practice. The 2018 Assaults and Emergency Workers Offences Act, the Protect the Protectors Act, provides a good template. The Act was a, a welcome step forward, but the law has been implied inconsistently. For example, the Prison Officers Association, Association told me that it's been unevenly applied to the, their context of work, with different rulings classing prison officers as emergency workers or not. Similarly, social workers are often required to engage in emergency work, but they are not included in the Act. However, they are protected while enforcing child protection orders or carrying out mental health assessments in Scotland under the Emergency Workers Scotland Act 20, 2005. Uh, these inconsistencies would appear if the law encompassed, uh, would not appear, would disappear <laughs> if the law encompassed all public facing workers. Creating a new offence would simplify the legal process, iron out the existing inconsistency and encourage law enforcement to proactively investigate and support complainants against perpetrators. It would also mean empowering frontline workers to speak up and report incidents of abuse, <coughs> knowing there is a greater chance that they will be listened to and investigated. It should be an inalienable right to be treated with respect and dignity in your workplace. Mm -hmm. But many people feel they are ignored by a system which doesn't care about them or take them seriously. Today is our opportunity to demonstrate that we do, and that this is why I commend the bill to this House. Yeah. The member have the leave to bring in the bill. The question is that the honourable member have leave to bring in the bill, as many of that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no, I think the ayes have. 